Hey YouTube, it's Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I'm back again with another video. Today's video is going to be some vacation footage. I just got back from Honolulu, Hawaii. We stayed in the Waikiki area and flew back on Saturday and I am still exhausted. The four hour time difference is quite a kick in the pants and yesterday I felt like a zombie. Saturday, I felt like a zombie, actually, even more, but yesterday, I was shocked at how tired I still was, and today, I just feel really off, but I'm getting there. I think I am a little better today. I don't handle these things quite as well since I'm getting older. However, I have taken some time and put together the footage from three stores that I visited. I visited more than that, and so there will be more footage to come, but I've put together footage from Louis Vuitton, Dior, and Valentino within this video and in that order. And with Louis Vuitton, I made it about halfway through and then they asked me to stop filming. After that, I asked every store if it was okay for me to film before I did so. And I was granted permission by Dior and Valentino. And so that's why I compiled those three brands into this particular video. I got a tremendous amount of information from Saint Laurent. They were oh so kind to me, but I was not allowed to film. So I have a bunch of pictures and I'm going to try to talk about the pictures as I show them to you in the next video. And then I also got a lot of information from Fendi. They have a new holiday collection that I would like to show you. And I got to see some unique bags there as well. And so I will be talking with the photographs kind of phasing in and out. Hopefully that goes well and I'm able to accomplish that. If not, please just be patient. Within this video, like I said, it's mostly footage that's video footage versus photography, but when I do go into the photography part of the Louis Vuitton store, I am putting comments onto the photographs so you can know my thoughts about certain bags or the names of certain bags as we go. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and send you into Louis Vuitton. We will start out strolling down the main drag in Waikiki. Got our mess. We have Saint Laurent. And right up there, we have Louis Vuitton. The silk scarves here are amazing. I don't remember ever seeing such beautiful scarves. And then here is like a by the pool, never pool. Again, I don't know that I have ever seen that particular configuration. That is so pretty. These little Vivians are adorable. And there's, I've never seen this either. It's like the micro, or the micro monogram on a Speedy 20. These little leather charms are cute. Maybe they're Christmas ornaments actually, I think they are. And here are some of the Christmas animation pieces this year. There's the pencil case. I think I'm not a big fan of these, but I do like the balloon one the best. The material on these feels really good. I have not seen this capucines. It's like a lizard trim, almost like a touch. This is the BB size. Reminds me of the Hermes Touch ones. This one has ostrich. That's the tiny one, and then there's the BB again. There's like iridescent LVs on these little baby capucines. It's really cool. Diet Prayat Glass, I think that's how you say it. I've never seen such cool capucines all in one place. This is cool, hat's all beaded, and it is on leather, not like satin or anything. This is like a crystal with velvet. It's insane all the ones they have here. These twists have like an enamel on the twist part, and not only that, they have the leather braided into the strap with a leather brake. 
on top of that. How awesome. So while I was at Louis Vuitton, I saw so many gorgeous Capucines bags and a fair amount of gorgeous twist bags. In addition to all of the other wonderful items they have there, I was only really disappointed with the Atlantis. That bag was very underwhelming. It felt like it was much, much lower quality than the Neverfull BB, which is surprising considering it seems to cost almost twice as much, I think. And the other bag, I guess, I said I was only disappointed in the Atlantis. I wasn't really, I didn't really have any expectations for the Kusan bag. I really like that bag, but they had one there with like crystals on it. And I'm sure you saw the photograph a minute ago. And that one I just didn't really like. It was not aesthetically pleasing to me like most of the other items in the store were. Like I said, these store visits aren't necessarily in any particular order. They're not even necessarily on the same day, but we're gonna head into Dior next. They have a beautiful new butterfly collection, which I'm going to show you during the video. And then of course, we're gonna check out my favorite bag, the Caro bag. And I found another favorite bag at Dior, which you'll just have to watch and see what that might be. Here's one that I don't think anybody has ever seen before. <laughs> I'm sure people have seen it before, but this is Unborn Baby Lamb Fur. And then of course the Crystal Dior Charm, which is gorgeous, but I wanna get up close. It's almost like they're little dreadlocks, but they are super soft to the touch. And I just wanted to show you the texture on this little mini Lady Dior. The handle is made of snake. So these are lizard. And if you look at this one on the back, it has little, almost what looks like perforations in the lizard scales and that is natural that that is how it came and these are in a glass case so i'm assuming they cost a little bit more than the average lady dior beautiful i love how it has those pearls in the middle so this is a miss dior kind of a wallet on chain and then it's got a nice crossbody chain and it even has a really beautiful pearl detail right there can't get so there is a new collection with butterflies and I'm going to kind of show you some of the different ones. When you talk about work of art, look at this. This is leather and we have beads and embroidery combined together in this butterfly motif. There is one of the Dior tote bags in the medium size, the book totes. One of the saddle bags. Let's get up close and look at the detail work. It looks like there's little crystals sewn in. So this is a Miss Caro, and again, it's like the wallet on chain size, maybe a little bigger actually than a little a standard wallet on chain, but it has this new butterfly print on it. And you'll notice that the strap 
is a mixture of gold and enamel. The enamel is a coating on top of the brass. This DJOY has gorgeous butterflies. attached to the leather and then look at the Dior charm. Look at this. This butterfly with the little pearl is just stunning. This is my second favorite bag here at Dior after the Caro and I just discovered it today. The reason I like this better than the new Lady Dior with the flap on it is that I can reach my thumb in and pull the flap up. The small lady dewer and the medium lady dewer i can't do that it's too deep to get the edge of the flap with my thumb so therefore i worry about my rings scratching up the bag but this is really easy and it does have a very nice capacity again this is the regular size and it is exactly 10 and a half inches wide and i would guess that the depth is probably two inches or maybe slightly less. So this is the regular DJOY in lambskin. I do love how it sits crossbody. It's very comfortable, not nearly as bulky. You can see it has a slim profile. This strap actually works for me on the shoulder. So here is the strap on the shoulder. As you can see, it fits pretty comfortably. It's not a super small drop it's a decent sized drop and the handles do fold completely flat there's nothing hooking to the handles like on the lady dior so this puffy version i had never seen it in person and um i have to say i do like the supple leather better and apparently there is no stamping involved so this is some of these are lambskin i think most of these are so the grain is flatter than it is on my calfskin version, but the grain is all natural. Nothing is done to create this. This is just the natural grain. So it's not stamped into the leather like Chanel caviar is or the Chanel grained leather is. It is just the way the leather is. So the supple leather Caro bag in the medium size is the same size as this one. This is a lambskin and it doesn't have any real grain. It's puffy. A lot like the Lulu Puffer. Maybe not quite as puffy as that, but it's pretty darn puffy compared to my supple leather version. And I had no idea that it would be this puffy. I mean, it's puffy everywhere on the bottom. And because of the way the leather reflects the light, it makes that more pronounced. It does feel absolutely amazing, but of course so does my supple leather one in rust and graystone. Here are the two together, and I'm not sure the name of the color of the other one, but you can see the difference of the larger quilting versus the smaller quilting like mine. And I do want to look at them sideways to just compare. I do feel like this is a bulkier profile than this one. But again, it's all about personal taste. Absolutely love, love, love the Caro bag in any iteration. So there it is under my arm. The color of this one is called Sable. The puffy version does just feel a little bulkier to me than the supple version that I have. I still love it, but I really do think I prefer the one I have. And they may not have been able to make the quilts quite as big as this, or the design of the supple quite as big as this, because it just wouldn't have the same effect to have the quilts that big with that grain in them. Okay, so here is the thick Dior strap with the Caro. I think it's almost the same, if not the same color. I love, love, love the strap, but I want the adjustable one. And they actually have adjustable ones that are thick, like this, and then they have thinner ones, like that, which I'm going to try on now. So here it is with the skinnier strap, and the buckle hits me in a really nice spot. I would wear it just a slight bit longer, maybe move that down to there, and it would be even more comfortable. 
This is a navy, which actually does not look bad with a gray, but I love the way that other gray color looks with this bag. And it would probably look okay with my coral one too, or my rust color one. So what do you think of the D-Joy bag? I'm kind of digging it, but I do feel like it may have just a little bit too much going on with it for me. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't buy it if I found it for a deal because it is gorgeous, but the handles folding down under my arm, that is really the main drawback I see with that bag. I still am in love with the Caro bag. Seeing them in person, I don't think I would buy the puffier version. I think I would add one more of the supple version if I were to add any more Caro bags, but I would have to find it for a deal. So now let's move on to Valentino. It's just a super quick trip, but I did want to show you what I found there because it's currently 40% off here in the continental United States. So you might want to know what it is. It's the V logo bag. And unlike some of the ones that dent in, this one doesn't. And the leather is super soft, comes with a guitar strap. And a top handle. So is the inside of this a suede? Yes. It's very nice. That one's about $2,300, $500 off for being in Hawaii. This is the medium one stud, and I love this berry color. This one's actually on clearance, so I'm about to find out how much it is. I can't remember if that is the same size I had before or not. This one's 40% off. Yeah, $2,130. It's gorgeous. What's the name of the color? Um... <laughs> has the slip pocket in the front mm -hmm. pocket here so I was very interested in the prune colored one stud bag at Valentino now that is the same bag that I got from I believe it was Brown's department store in the gingerbread color and when it came it was damaged by the chain and so I ended up returning it but I also returned it because I didn't love that gingerbread color that Valentino makes with the brass hardware. I like the Caro in the rust color with the gold hardware much better. It's just the shades are slightly different and the Caro combo works better for me and so I kind of put an ixnay on that bag after I saw it in person in the gingerbread color. And if I remember correctly, it was a tight fit for my things. It looks like it's about the same size as the Cassie 19, but I will tell you, I don't think it holds quite as much. Of course, I didn't put my things in it in store, but I referenced that in the video that I made about the gingerbread one, which I can link down below. I do think though I could make it work if I really wanted to add that in. And that bag is 40% off, which brings it to 2,130. I'm gonna hold out though. I'm gonna wait and find one maybe on Fashion File or wait for a deeper discount because in that color, I think I might be able to find that. And if I don't, I'm okay with not having it. It's not a super neutral color. I do think I could wear it as a neutral with a lot of my clothing. So it's not that I wouldn't wear it, but it's not like a beige or a gray or a black. And so I think that it has a more specific audience and I may be able to find it for quite a steal, like $1,600, $1,700 if I wait for a fashion file and eBay to get their stock in eventually from the people that are buying it on sale right now. So that is, I guess, a wrap up of all of the things that I wanted to tell you and show you from the first three stores that we are going through today. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Do it and ring the notification bell so that you are notified of future exciting content such as this. Also, go find me on Instagram. The name there is the same. It's the at symbol, then the handbag housewife, all lowercase. You can DM me there or you can email me at thehandbaghousewife at gmail.com. If I don't hear from you, I will see you again real soon. Take care and have a fabulous day. Bye.